All right, everybody have their Bibles with them here tonight? All right, everybody have their fingers tuned up a little bit because we got a lot of scripture to go through. And uh, I had a little bit of a, a challenge with the printer today, so I don't have slides for our presentation printed up or my normal plethora of verses that I used. And so I'm really going to uh, uh, put us on a little bit of a notice here. I'd like to do a little bit of a sword drill as we're going through our lesson tonight. Um, I'm going to uh, give the verses that we want to be able to read from the Word of God. I'll give the verse. You guys finger there as quick as you can. And the first one that gets there, just simply raise your hand. We'll see if I can see who that is. And then I'll call on you and get to read that verse. Um, we've got quite a few verses uh, to go over tonight. Um, 37 to be exact. So um, everybody will do their share. Hope you don't get blisters by the end of the night. <laughs> Turning those pages, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look here. <clears throat> in uh, 2 Chronicles chapter number 7 tonight. 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. And uh, maybe my batteries have died in this thing here. Yeah, the switch is turned on. But it's just not operating for me. So I think the batteries have given up the ghost. And I don't have my bag here to deal with that quite yet. I should have changed the batteries when you told me to, huh? Amen. All right. There we go. And you could maybe you just manually do it for me. Is it working now? Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. So Second Chronicles chapter number 7 tonight. If you'll turn in your Bibles over there, and this is a familiar portion of Scripture um, where we find a conditional promise from God here in uh, Second Chronicles chapter number 7. And uh, it, as God is dealing with Solomon here, He places that very large... Uh, word in the beginning of several verses here as we're going through this, and it's that word, if. Big two letters, I and F. And that implies for us that conditional promise as we take a look through here. And so if we can look here at Second Chronicles chapter number 7, um, verse number 14 is where, or actually verse number 12 is where we'll begin. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's awesome to see here as God uh, gives us this conditional promise here. Um, he's he's a, making an appearance here to Solomon and sharing these things with him. And But you know what? There's some work for us to do, isn't there? There's work for us to do. And we can cry out to God in times of need and we can ask for God's blessing and and uh, but you know what we've got to do our part too don't we God's just not going to send down the bag of change out of the sky every single time although he may do that every once in a while you know uh, that's not above what God would do but you know what we've got to be doing our part as we consider these things I'm going to read on here verse number 15 now mine eyes shall be open and my ears a tent unto the prayer that is made in this place. This is God speaking. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. God planned on being here forever, didn't He? He's, uh, he's not shying away from this at all. Verse 17, And as for thee, if thou wilt walk before Me, He's talking to Solomon now, Personally, and as for thee, if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked, and do according to all that I have commanded thee, and shall observe my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenanted with David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man to be ruler in Israel." So God not only challenges His, his people, His children, but He has a personal challenge um, for uh, Solomon here as well. In verse number 19, But if ye turn away 
and forsake my statutes and my commandments which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land which I have given them. And this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among the nations. Interesting. God says, I plan on being here forever, perpetually. But if you don't do your part and you turn from me and you walk away from me, boy, we're just going to toss the whole thing aside. I'm going to move on from this place. It's not going to be that special place that I intend for it to be. Verse 21, And this house which is high shall be an astonishment to everyone that passeth by it. So shall he say, Why hath the Lord done this unto this land and unto this house? God is real big about having... Um, things that are uh, monuments, if you will, not only for us to remember some things as people, but also as God um, is giving His very own words here, it could be a reminder that we ought to stay in that straight and narrow path also. God says, you know what, they're going to walk by here, they're going to say, why have the Lord done this unto this house? Verse 22, and it shall be answered, because they forsake the Lord God of their fathers which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods, and worshipped them, and served them. Therefore hath He brought all this evil upon them. God wants to have a relationship with us, doesn't He? And He desires to bless us, and He desires to, to live and to walk with us forever. But as long as we're here on this earth, we can wander from Him. We can uh, go our own way. And so it's important for us as believers as we consider the things that God has called out for us to do back up in 2 Chronicles 7.14. We're going to look in a little more detailed manner at these things right here. And uh, as we consider the very first thing that God has asked us to do, and that is to humble ourselves. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 18, verse number 4, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Humility is something that is um, a great quantity or a great quality that God looks for in our lives. He's consistently looking down at the humble, and He has a special place uh, in His heart for those that are humble under His authority. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 6 says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. This is something that God wants to do for us. He wants to exalt us. He wants to reward us in a way to where we are uplifted, but it comes by us being humble. We can't think that we're going to be prideful and uh, allow some things to uh, happen in our life that oppose God and think that He's going to be with us and He's going to bless us because He's not going to do it. We've got to humble ourselves. James chapter 4 and verse number 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He shall lift you up. God says He will do it, won't He? He'll lift us up, and He has no question that He has the authority and the power to do that. And He's telling us, if we will per, uh, respond in this way, then this is what He's going to do. And we need to keep that in mind. What God says, um, He means it. What God says, He can perform it. He's not just giving us lip service like we sometimes give Him lip service. Amen? God says, I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. I can do it. He is going to do it. Proverbs 29, verse number 23. I said we were going to have a sword drill, but we're not doing much of that yet, are we? Proverbs chapter 29 and verse number 23 says this, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low. We, we, you know, we, we have pride in our lives and we sometimes want to exalt ourselves, but as we attempt to exalt ourselves, we may, might as well understand it now, we're driving ourselves down into the ground when we do that. We're, just, we're destroying ourselves. And so humility is something that is it's big and God wants to reward us for being humble, but it takes action on our behalf in order uh, to actually show God and demonstrate to Him that we are humble. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 19 says this, Better is it to be with an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. 
you know, if it was our choice and we had a, a choice in the matter and we saw all this gold and all these things, and man, it'd be great to, to divide the spoil with those that are out there, right? But not if they're prideful, not if they've been given that in a way that is not honoring to God. You know what? If God wants to give us, to spo- give us spoil, He'll give it to us. If God wants to give us a little extra, He'll give it to us. Um, he's in charge of that. We need not allow our prideful heart to get in a way where um, we're striving right past God in any matters that are before us. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 8, the Bible says, And being found in fashion as a man, talking about Jesus Christ, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Well, this is something that we need to consider that Jesus Christ, He led the way for us and He was the example, wasn't He? And He's teaching us how to be humble. Knowing that He is God in the flesh and yet He humbled Himself and went to the cross. Listen, His own creation was spitting upon Him and punching Him and and treating Him horribly and saying, and He's the Creator of the universe. Imagine that. What humility it took for Him to not just completely crush those people that were there in judgment. He could have. He's God, isn't He? But He showed Himself to be humble as He was there um, enduring those things. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 12 says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind. Amen. And we've, we talked through this about a month or so ago, um, and we've got to put this on. We've got to become humble. This has to be a characteristic that other people um, are able to see that are walking around us. If we will live our lives in the way that Jesus Christ is calling us to, people are going to see the humility in our life. They're not going to see the pride cropping up because we're going to be walking in the Spirit as we ought to. The Bible says in James chapter 4 and verse number 6, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Something that I want. Amen? Having grace is something that we need to strive for, of course. And you know what? As we humble ourselves and we trust the Lord, knowing that He's in control of these things, that's going to be one step closer for us to understand that thing, those characteristics that we need to demonstrate in our life to please God. And you think about it, as we're talking about these different characteristics here that God really desires to see for us and, and lived out in our lives, um, when we do live them out, God smiles down upon us. I can see His face smiling as He looks down. And so the question that we need to consider tonight as we're even studying through this is, is God smiling down on my actions? Is He smiling down on those things that He sees me demonstrating in my Christian life? The second thing here is for us to pray. And we need to pray. And we must pray. Psalm chapter 4 and verse number 1. Somebody want to look that up for me? Psalm um, chapter 4 and verse number 1. Miss Cook? Amen. God's going to hear our prayers, isn't He? If we're walking in a right relationship uh, with Him, He says here, when I was in distress, have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. If we're walking with the Lord, He's going to hear us. If we're uh, 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 confessed up, if you will, and we're not just walking in blatant sin and ignoring those things that God would have us to do, um, God is going to hear us. Uh, Psalm chapter 5 and verse number 3 says this, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. This is something that we need to strive to do. Amen? The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. We actually need to demonstrate and do that. And show God that we want to pray. He's given us the uh, different characteristics, the different things that we ought to demonstrate in our life, being humble uh, in our minds and our actions, and of course to pray. The Bible says in Psalm 17, verse number 1, it says, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of feigned lips." God is willing to hear us once again, and He wants to provide for us those answers to our prayer, but He desires for us to walk according to His precepts. 
And if we want our prayers to be heard, we need to walk in that way and we need to pray without ceasing, most definitely. Who wants to look up Psalm, well, let's do it. Psalm 141, verse number 2. Psalm 141 and verse number 2. Andrew? Let my prayer be set forth. Amen. We hear so many times as God uh, gives word back on the prayers of His children and how it's a sweet savor to Him. And we ought to uh, consider that as we read this verse, let my prayer be set forth before Thee as incense. Um, as we lift up um, our brothers and sisters in Christ and present our needs and praise Him and thank Him, it's a sweet-smelling Savior to our Lord and Savior and um, our Heavenly Father as they hear these words come from our mouth. Colossians chapter number 4 and verse number 2. Let's turn there. Colossians 4 and verse number 2. Kathleen? Amen. Continue in prayer and watch in the same in thanksgiving. This is God's desire for us as we consider prayer. Amen. We not only pray for our needs and and make our requests known, but you know what? We need to watch in the same in thanksgiving. Amen. And be thankful for what He has done for us. God is so very, very good in all that He has done. And we need to consider that as we praise Him and we pray to Him. We should praise Him and thank Him. Amen. This next section here, seek my face. Seek my face. As we consider the seeking of uh, God's face, let's look up Hosea 5.15. Hosea 5.15. You have to dig back into your Old Testament. Hosea 5.15, Michelle. Amen. We ought to be seeking God early. Amen. And we ought to with intent want to seek seek God's face. Listen what God says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. At times when we're living and we stumble and we sin against God, boy, we got to turn to him, don't we? We got to seek him out over it. Um, God desires for us to confess our sin to, to him. And He's going to prompt the, or give the Holy Spirit that prompting to, to give us a little bit of grief and some guilt over it um, as if He's tapping on our shoulder to go to Him. But it's our job to do it, isn't it? We've got to do it. Um, we can't think that God is just automatically going to forgive. You know, there are some people that really think that uh, God is automatically going to forgive their sin without them actually interacting with Him about it at all. Brother Dan? Yes, sir. Yes, amen. 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 Um, Let's see here. Uh, Psalm chapter number 27 and verse number 8 says this, When thou saidest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. That ought to be our response, shouldn't it? We ought to be seeking after God even uh, in our lives. You know, we think about turning from our sin and turning back to Him and seeking Him, but we ought to be seeking Him every single day regardless of uh, our state that we're living in. Amen? And if we want to have sweet fellowship with Him, um, we are going to seek His face and we're going to do it on purpose, aren't we? You know, it's so easy for us to say that we want to be disciples of Christ, but we've got to demonstrate that. We've got to do some of these things that God's talking about here. Psalm chapter 9 and verse number 10. The Bible says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. For those of us that choose to seek after God on a regular basis, God says, I'm not forsaking you. Now we know that that seems like a, a, a redundant thing to say because after all, God has told His children, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen? But if we live in a way that is not pleasing to God, we can separate ourselves from His fellowship. We need to confess our sin on a regular basis to Him um, so that we can walk and we can be desirous uh, to seek Him. 
Psalm chapter number 10 and verse number 4 says, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. We consider the, the ungodly that are out there, the wicked, and you know what? They are not seeking after God at all, are they? And there's a great contrast between the believer and those that are unbelievers as we look at the walks of life that are there. But you know what? We need not walk in the same excesses uh, as riot as those that live in the world, should we? Sometimes their behaviors tend to kind of rub, on, uh, rub off on us if we're spending too much time with people that are really soaked up in the world. And we got to be careful with that because we know that God tells us we ought to seek Him early. We ought to seek Him often. We need to go to Him. Um, but yet, the people that live in the world, are they're not going to stand on that same principle. And they're going to even try and put us down. And when we even talk about being convicted about things that we've done, they don't, they don't believe um, hardly any of these things are wrong in themselves at all anyway because they don't believe in Almighty God. Psalm chapter 14 and verse 2 says this, the Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. God is looking for somebody that's going to seek Him. And when God sees us seeking Him, it brings a smile to His face. It's pleasing to Him. And we need to keep that in mind and we need to continue to seek God's face on a regular basis. And then verse number 14 of 2 Chronicles chapter number 7. Once again, we, we discussed humble thyself, pray, seek my face. The next part of this verse says, turn from their wicked ways. You know, sometimes we um, think about this and we think this is just for uh, people that are ungodly. But you know what? People that are saved sin also, don't they? And sometimes if we're not careful as believers, we can walk down that same path that some of the ungodly are walking down. And if we find ourselves on that path, we got to get off it. Amen? we gotta, we got to turn uh, away from that. Psalm chapter 40 and verse number 4 says, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. You're talking about we need to turn to God. We need to turn from wickedness. Um, you know what? There's an a ungodly uh, group that's going to uh, try and entice us to turn in their way. And they're going to try to get us to live in the way that uh, they're living. Not acknowledging God, but doing it their own way. And that's offensive to God Almighty. Psalm 44.18 says, Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from the way. You know what? Sometimes, I'll re let me read you the previous verse, verse number 17 and 18 together to help a little bit more. All this has come upon us, yet have we not forgotten thee, neither have we dealt falsely in thy covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from our way. You know what? We need to be in that stead, don't we? No matter what's happening to us, we need to just be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm walking in the way I ought to be walking. I'm not going to be uh, uh, discouraged by these things that are going on around me. I'm confident in my walk. And I know these are some things that maybe I'm just having to go through. Verse, or, uh, Psalm chapter number 69 and verse number 16. Hear me, O Lord, for Thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of Thy tender mercies. We consider turning from our wickedness and turning to God and we need to be crying out to Him that He be willing to turn and to receive us as we uh, confess our sin to Him. You know, I'm going to say this again. If we, if we don't confess our sin, it's going to be difficult for God to want to restore fellowship with us. That's what the Word of God says. We've got to confess our sin on a regular basis. If we live our lives in a way that is uh, disturbing to Him and we don't ever want to go to Him and ask Him to forgive us, He's not going to want to relate to us. He's not going to want to hear our prayers. He's not going to want to try and bless us or hear what we have going on. He's probably going to want to take us to the woodshed, isn't he? And try and convince us to do it a little bit differently. Proverbs chapter number 1 and verse number 32. The Bible says this, For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Proverbs 1.32 You know, we need to consider these things. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 and 15. 
Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. We need not be a part of this at all. We consider turning from wickedness. We need to be turning from wickedness before we get involved with it. Amen? As we see the street signs for that wicked behavior uh, going before us as it does because that's what happens first, right? We see it. The lust of the eyes, we see it. We begin to consider it. Um, and we, this is the time we need to say, man, turn me away from that. Help me tell me, get, get the GPS, the Holy Spirit to say, hello, you better make a U-turn here. Get off this road. Uh, don't get on it. And we've got to turn from our wickedness. And you know what? Something that we ought to do also as we consider turning from our wickedness. We need to examine ourselves on a regular basis. We need to consider those things that God is really calling us to do and compare our very own lives to the Word of God to see if what we're doing is really lining up with Scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 28. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. This is around communion, the Lord's Supper. We're getting to, ready to participate in this this, ne this next week. And you know what? We have to examine ourselves. I mean, just because we're followers of Jesus Christ and we're walking with the Lord um, doesn't mean that we shouldn't examine ourselves on a regular basis. This is how we get sinful behaviors and thoughts and whatnot brought to the forefront of our minds so we can confess them and restore our fellowship with God. And of course, as we consider going into the uh, communion this next week, we have to examine ourselves. We have to make sure that we're found in a place where uh, God is going to be pleased with the way we're living as we come to remember the body that was broken for us and the blood that was poured out upon the cross of Calvary. Psalm chapter number 26 and verse number 2. Who wants to look that up for me? Somebody get there. Psalm 26 and verse number 2. Andrew. That ought to be our prayer, amen? You know, we, we want to examine ourselves, but we're going to need a little help on that. Because I don't like hearing about my low down, no good behavior or thought processes. It's difficult for me to get my head around and sometimes I don't want to go there mentally. But I cry out to God, examine me. Holy Spirit, convict me. Bring these things up into my memory as far as what I've done and, and what I need to confess before you and help me uh, to walk in the way that would be pleasing to you. Um, 2 Corinthians 13.5. Let's turn to there. 2 Corinthians 13.5. Andrew? Amen. Once again, we ought to examine ourselves. We ought to consider these things that God has uh, called us to do and uh, you know, really look at our lives um, in comparison to the Word of God. And say, you know what, Lord? I want to examine myself. I want to keep myself away from this place that is displeasing to You. You know, uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 30, it says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. When we consider this word grieve, um, you can look it up in your Strong's Concordance found under the Greek uh, dictionary, word number 3076. And the meaning of this word grieve in this verse is this, to distress, to cause to be sad, to cause grief, to be in heaviness, be sorrowful, to make sorry. So as we consider this meaning in this verse, Ephesians 4.30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit. Don't cause grief to Him. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to be in heaviness. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to be sorrowful. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to be sorry for what's going on in my life and in your life. Don't cause the Holy Spirit to be in distress as we live in a way that might contradict the things that God would have us to do. We need to grieve not the Holy Spirit. And if we can keep our heads around this, 
Not grieving the Holy Spirit. Where does grieving the Holy Spirit come from? When we do things in contradiction to what God would have us to do. Amen? And the, whole, the Comforter has been given to us to guide and to direct us. And that even means when we need to make a U-turn. Or we need to take an immediate left. Or we just need to phone a friend and figure out where we need to go because we're lost. Um, we've got to do these things. And you know what? God wants us to be in that place where we have sweet fellowship with Him. And it's only going to come as we consider being humble in our own minds. As we consider our prayer life throughout the week, every single day. As we consider how often we seek His face. As we consider the approach and the rapidness that we want to get away um, from wickedness and, and wrong thinking and wrongdoing. And being able to understand this all results from taking self-inventory quite a bit, doesn't it? There was a song that we sang in choir years ago that uh, went, the, the song actually sang verses uh, 14 and 15. I think maybe 15. My wife might correct me. But you know, uh, these are some things that we need to consider as we Think about our relationship with our Heavenly Father. He gives us great warning here in this conditional promise. And He says, you know what, if you'll do these things, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to be with you. My ear is going to be attentive unto your prayers. But if you choose not to do these things and you turn from Me and you walk in the other direction from Me, it's not going to be good. Separation in God's fellowship only causes us to uh, be thrown further and further off the path that we should be on when it comes to pleasing God. And you know, the longer we walk on that path and you know, we can start getting upset and we talked about anger quite a bit and you know, it can become easy to get angry at God also. You consider the, the things that you're walking through and the challenges that you're facing in your own mind and coming to grips and being convicted over um, having to do things better or even making that U-turn on that road. And you know what? Um, we can get upset and start shaking our fists and our own heart at God and not want to go to Him anymore. Christians do that all the time. I've watched lots of Christians get upset over circumstances that have happened in their lives. They're just circumstances, folks. Amen? That doesn't change the, the love that God has for me, does it? Remember, I mean, what, what, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall principalities? Shall powers? I mean, it, it, we list this whole uh, list of things. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. So why would I allow myself to get upset and walk away from Him over my own behavior? God wants to bless us. You know, there's a, there's a challenge given here to God's people. There's a challenge here given to Solomon. God wants to see revival in the hearts of His people, doesn't He? And He's challenging us here tonight to spark a little bit of that revival in our own hearts here in Anaheim as we continue to invite people to come and we watch God's work being done here in this place. It's amazing to be a part of it. We need to pray for revival in our city here in Anaheim. We need to pray that people would want to turn from their own ways and that they would turn to God. And it's great to see the work that God is doing here. God is doing some amazing things. And He's going to continue to do them as long as He has the likes of you and I continuing to raise our hand and say, Here, my Lord, what would you have me to do in the mix of this? You know, I watched this video this last week. Um, a, a Navy SEAL gentleman that I watch, he's a, he's a Christian, and it kind of helps me from the perspective to get the military stuff and the Christian stuff and, and it all flowing in the right direction. But you know, so that one of the videos that this guy just put up here yesterday it was very, um, it wasn't eye opening, but it was a little eye opening in considering witnessing. He had told this story on how he went into town where he lives and he went to go get some supplies and whatnot, and a homeless man approached him. And he said, Man, this guy, he, he looked all disheveled and he wasn't talking good. And, um, and he approached me and he asked me if I had a few dollars to give him. And he said, I didn't have a few dollars. And so I told him, no, I don't have a few dollars to give you. you know, he said, I have cards. I don't have any cash. I'm in running shorts, this and that and the other. And so he, walks, he tells the story that he walks away from the man. 
And then the Holy Spirit starts convicting him. What are you doing? Why'd you go walk away from that dude? Well, he probably needs something. He's asking you for money for a reason. And so he went back to his truck as he tells the story and he pulls out some survival food that he had in his Jeep there, a, you know, energy bar and a couple of other things, some meat and whatnot. And he brings it back to the man and uh, asks him if he's hungry. And uh, the man takes these items and he said, clearly the guy was hungry. He opened the packages and began to devour the stuff that I gave him right in front of me. And this is what he said, man, I thought I did a pretty good job. I walked away feeling good. I went back and got in my Jeep and he goes, I made it way back up the hill. And he goes, man, just as I'm getting ready to pull back on my property, the Holy Spirit smacks me in the back of the head and says, what are you, some kind of dummy? Why don't you get it yet? Blank his name in there. And he's sitting up near his truck in the middle of nowhere. There's trees out, and he's got his Bible laying on the ground. He's got a rock on each side so the pages don't blow. And he's there on his knees, and he's convicted by the Holy Spirit that he didn't do his job in talking to that man that he came in contact with. He goes, man, I left thinking I did good. I gave him some food. He goes, but I didn't give him anything that had to do with the bread of life. And he said, how convicting it is. And you know what? Each and every one of us, as we consider our walk, we need to make sure that we're understanding that God has a purpose for us being here and it's for Him to use us. And we have to be paying attention at every opportunity that He gives us. Amen. We don't want to go back to Him and say, Lord, please forgive me, I missed it. We want to be able to praise Him and say, Lord, I did it and I did what you asked. Multiply your word, allow them to receive Christ the Savior. Amen. Thank you for your attentiveness here tonight. I hope you took some good notes on these verses. It was a very challenging uh, study to go through this. God wants to bless us. We just have to do our part. Let's pray. Father, we love You. You are so very good to us. We thank You for Your watch care over us, Lord. We thank You for being attentive to each one of our different uh, walks with You and drawing us close to Your side and keeping us there. Lord, we pray that You would do just that. Help us to get the spiritual exercise that we need so that we might be able to be sharp instruments for You to use in this world. We love you, Lord. Bless as we go out through this week, for we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.